So what are the five secrets of profitable technical traders? We are going to talk about that today, coming up next. So the first secret that successful technical traders have is that they would trade with the flow. They would go with the flow, meaning that they would trade along with the trend rather than against the trend. Way too many stock investors and also traders, and this is also a mistake that I made when I first started out, is that when I see an asset, let's say a stock, is trading at this price, and people be like, oh my god, it's so cheap, it couldn't get cheaper. Then a lot of people would buy at this point only to see the stock price or the asset go down you're literally buying on a downtrend when you're buying on a downtrend which probability is higher the probability of the price going up or going down common sense you know that the price would very likely go down because it is downtrend of course the market would make minor retracements upwards there are a lot of investors traders that get tricked Oh, the market is going up, then they buy more here, only to see the price. Then when the price retraces a little bit, then they make a buy. When the price retraces a little bit again, then they make a buy. So they are making many buy orders on a downtrend. And that's really dangerous because when you are buying on a downtrend, it is like trying to go up an escalator that is going down. You know what I'm saying? If you do want to trade against the trend, do it when you are more experienced in the market. Because you know what, Paul Tito Jones, he can trade against the trend because he is somebody who can pick tops and bottoms. And there are also people who trade mean reversion strategies. Yes, only do that when you're more experienced, okay? So the second secret of profitable technical traders is before they even open a buy or sell, they would know exactly where should they set their TP and stop loss. Meaning that they would set their TP and stop loss even before buying and before selling. Because this is the thing, a lot of beginner traders and also investors, only once they have open the trade, then they decide, okay, now what? Now when you make a decision after you've opened a trade, you will set your TP and stop loss based on emotions. Whereas if you set your TP and stop loss before you open the trade, you are setting the price target, the stop loss target when you're in a rational state. For traders, the more you need to set stop loss. Whereas for investors, stock investors, I know people who don't use stop loss. The successful technical traders know that their stop loss TP target is just as important as where they buy or sell. Face it, anybody can click buy and sell, right? The hard part for most people is determine where should they take their money before the price retraces. And by now you probably already know that different systems require different levels of TP target and stop loss. Different currencies require different levels of TP target and stop loss. So the third secret of profitable technical traders is they will use multiple time frames to evaluate meaning that they don't just rely on just one time frame and then they buy sell based on that because it's a thing different time frames is going to give you contradicting signals so if different time frames are giving you contradicting signals how do you know which one should you rely on let's say for example when you look at h1 price is going on a bullish trend but if you go to h4 price is at a downtrend so in this case, should you buy or sell? Remember when you trade, you need to look at probability of winning. Probability of winning in this trade, not very good. What you want is all the time frames to look at is in line. H1 going bullish, H4 going bullish. Daily time frame also in a bullish trend. Then there's a high probability trade. Let me give you an example, okay? H1 is your smaller time frame, okay? As compared to H4, which is your larger time frame. Your larger time frame is used to determine whether the bigger picture is it bullish or bearish. Okay? The larger time frame is used for determining the bigger picture of the trend to confirm your smaller time frame. Okay? Whereas a smaller time frame, you use it for entry. And if you are using daily time frame and H4, then your H4 would be the smaller time frame. Then you use H4 to enter, and then your daily time frame, you use it to determine whether the overall trend is it going bullish or is it going bearish. So the fourth secret of profitable technical traders is 
they would enter based on price. Now, I know this contradicts what I said just now, don't enter just based on price and all that. But what I'm saying is that they enter based on price rather than news or analyst forecast or recommendation. Because a lot of people, for example, stock investors, when they see Apple announce good earnings, they straight away go into the stock market and buy Apple. When they see the CNBC analysts say buy, then they straight away and go buy. Now, there's very many issues with this, okay? It's related to a market efficiency theory. If you buy once the news has been out, let's say for a few hours, very likely you are buying too late because the event has already been priced in. If you studied finance before, there's a very common term called EMT. It's called the efficient market theory. Or some people call it efficient market hypothesis. Or some people call it, uh, what's that? What my professor like to use? Market efficiency? Sorry, theory. Okay? So market efficiency theory tells you that all the events have already been priced in. Into an asset class, into the stock, into a currency. The price is a reflection of all the events. So the question is, is market really efficient or not? Is market really 100% efficient? My answer to that is, even though textbook might tell you market is 100% efficient, but in real life, if markets are really efficient, there wouldn't be hedge funds, there wouldn't be trading millionaires, there wouldn't be stock millionaires, there wouldn't be tons of people flocking to the stock market every day. So are markets efficient? Yes, but not all the time. Which is why you can find undervalued currencies, you can find undervalued stocks. You need to understand the different functions, okay? Fundamentals is for you to pick or choose. Okay? Fundamentals is for you to pick and choose. Pick and choose what? Which stock should you consider putting into your watch list? Which currency should you consider putting into your watch list? Then what are technicals or charts used for? They are used for you to enter. And not only just enter, but enter at the best price or the right price. Because if you pick a good stock, if you enter the wrong time, you're entering at the top, then it's very dangerous. There's not enough margin of safety for you. If you're a stock investor, typically 40 to 50% is a good start. If your margin of safety is like negative, it means that you're buying an overvalued stock. Then the final thing is, what are analysts recommendation for? Now studies have shown that, okay, more than half of the analyst recommendation will not work out. Then why do you still need to listen to analyst recommendation? You use analyst recommendation to confirm your whole entire analysis. At the end of the day, rely on your own research. Okay, then the fifth secret of profitable technical traders is that they will only trade under the right market conditions. There are different types of market environment, different types of market conditions. The three most common ones is a trending market, meaning that you see the market just trending bullish upwards. Okay, just a smooth upward trend or a smooth downward trend. Then the second type of market is called a ranging market, meaning that the market is just going sideways. Or some people call it the consolidation markets, okay? Then the other type of trading environment is the super choppy, super volatile trading environment. Price making major spikes, okay? So when you come across a system, you need to understand one thing, which is does your system work best in a trending market, in a ranging market, or volatile market conditions? For example, candlesticks patterns. If you have been training it for a long time, the reversal signals work better in a trending environment than a ranging market, than a volatile trading market. When you apply your candlestick patterns on a ranging market and on a volatile market, it's going to give you a lot of false signals. Certain systems just doesn't work in certain market conditions, okay? This is a mistake that I made too. Learn it the hard way, okay? The successful technical traders know that they should only shoot their gun in the right kind of market conditions. If you trade channels, that's very suitable to apply that into a ranging market, okay? If you are using trend-flowing systems, 
then your system would best work during a trending market. So I need to give you one more final bonus tip, okay? You need to keep your technical system as simple as possible. Successful technical traders know that they should not clutter their whole entire chart with redundant indicators. Now here's the thing, even though on this channel, I share with you a couple of technical indicators, doesn't mean that you should use all of them. You use what works for you. You use what you're comfortable with using. The very top traders that I know, even former Goldman Sachs traders, you think that their whole entire system is cluttered, they have multiple 10, 20 systems. Let me tell you something, they only have at most three systems. And each of these systems, they only need a few indicators. Add price action trading to that, then that's it. You don't need 10, 20 indicators for one system. It's going to make you confused. It's going to make your chart super cluttered. It's so cluttered that you can't even see the price. That was a mistake that I made when I first started out pro. So please don't repeat that. Less is more. Less is more. And you also don't have to trade all the currency pairs. Some traders they know they only trade dollar yen. They can make a living out of it. Just one currency. In fact, I know not only one trader, but a couple of traders who just stick with dollar yen. That's it. They don't touch euro dollar, they don't touch pound yen, they don't touch pound dollar. Maybe that's bonus number two for you. Don't trade way too many currency pairs. You know what? If you haven't watched my previous video, you know that with just one trade a week, 4% a month, which is super conservative, you can reach your financial goals within 5 to 6 years. I'm not even telling you to wait for 10, 20 years. At 5 to 6 years to financial freedom, which business does that for you? Tell me. Okay, so with that, I also need to know your opinion. What do you think are the other secrets that successful technical traders have that I did not mention? Let me know down in the comment section below. Okay, so with that, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.